Hello, and welcome to the second part of our discussion on estimating with confidence. We're going to talk about estimating a population proportion. Uh, before we get into the objectives, I want to review a couple things with you, uh, give you an overall look of where we're going, and then we'll talk about the objectives. All right, so uh, previously we used the confidence intervals and levels to estimate some unknown population parameter. Um, could be mean, could be standard deviation. Uh, we called that the parameter and the sample uh, of that parameter, the statistic. So in this chapter, we're going to focus on uh, what we learned with confidence intervals, and we're going to associate it with uh, the parameter of the proportion of the population. Uh, so some examples might be what proportion of U.S. adults are unemployed right now, uh, what proportion of high school students have cheated, or what proportion of college students pray daily. Uh, so those are some interesting statistics or values that we want to uh, potentially find or estimate based on whatever our uh, sampling data tells us. All right, so just going back to the same discussion we had on proportion and how we designate that mathematically or symbolically. So the P hat is going to be the sample proportion, and P without the hat is going to be the population proportion. All right, so we're going to set up a confidence interval for, uh, for P our population proportion. We're going to do that uh, by taking the sample proportion plus or minus the margin of error. And now for our uh, proportion population or sample proportion, we're going to use some critical value, which is z-score, times the standard deviation of the sample proportion, which is going to be the same thing as a standard error. That's going to be the square root of uh, the sample proportion times 1 minus the sample proportion of the complement of the sample proportion over the sample size, or n. All right, so we're gonna, I'm gonna come back to this whole equation. Uh, you can copy it down now, but the lesson is to uh, flesh out this particular uh, formula. So this is what we're gonna be talking about for this lesson. All right, so now going back to uh, the uh, objectives for this section. So we want to talk about conditions for estimating P, the population proportion. Uh, then we're going to talk about constructing a confidence interval for the population proportion. We're going to use a four-step uh, process, and we're going to do some more examples. And then we're going to talk about choosing a sample size necessary for desired margin of error. All right, so conditions for estimating P, shape, center, and spread. So we want to know that the sampling distribution is approximately normal. And uh, so we're going to say the sample size must be large enough so that NP and N times 1 minus P are both at least 10. In that case, we can conclude the sampling distribution is approximately normal. Uh, center, uh, the mean is going to be P. Uh, that is, the sample proportion is going to be an unbiased estimator of the population proportion. So if we're given uh, the population proportion P, uh, then we're going to use p hat as uh, that value for p as an unbiased estimator. We're going to make that assumption. And then the spread, we're going to check for that independence 10% uh, rule. If n is less than or equal to 1 tenth n, then we can use a formula for standard deviation of the sampling distribution. Uh, it's going to be the square root of uh, the uh, population proportion uh, times 1 minus the population proportion. But in this case, we're going to use the sampling proportion. All right, so and we'll talk about that in just a moment. All right, so let's go through an example. First example, <clears throat> Mr. Rotten has a container with 3,000 red beads and white beads total. The class took a uh, simple random sample of the container and drew 107 red beads and 144 white beads. Mr. Rotten asked the class to create a confidence interval for the proportion of red beads in the container. Uh, so we're going to check the conditions for constructing a confidence interval for P are met. So we're just going to uh, check the conditions first. Um, all right, so random, the class drew 251 beads from the container. Uh, normal NP and N times the complement of 
uh, p hat are both greater than 10, as you can see by the calculations. And independent, there are a total of 3,000 beads in the container. Uh, so 251 is less than one tenth of that value. Uh, so we can use that uh, standard deviation for sampling proportions uh, to create the value for the standard deviation. So all the conditions are met. All right, so this brings us to your first homework problem, 8.2.1. Uh, we're just going to check conditions here. So Mr. Otten wants his class to construct a confidence interval for the proportion of pennies that are more than 10 years old. In Mr. Otten's collection of 2,000 pennies, the class draws 102 pennies and found that 57 were greater than 10 years and uh, 45 were less than or equal to 10 years. Check the conditions for constructing a confidence interval, interval for P are met. So I'm going to leave this up here for a moment. And then I'm going to move on. All right, so we're going to talk about the second objective. We want to construct a confidence interval for P. So we just first checked for conditions. And now let's construct that confidence interval. All right, so let's talk about standard error. Standard error uh, is when the standard deviation of a statistic is estimated from data. That result is called the standard error of the statistic. All right, so standard deviation from the statistic is estimated, uh, that result's called the standard error of the statistic. And if we can say this in another way, the standard error is the estimated standard deviation of the sample proportion. So the standard error SE describes how close the sample proportion will be on average to the population proportion in repeated random samples of size n. So we're going to use that term standard error. All right, so st uh, standard error of a sample proportion is going to be <clears throat> the true standard deviation. So first, the true standard deviation of the total of all sample proportions should be a population standard deviation, where we're using population proportion for P. But, but because we don't always have uh, the population standard deviation, we can estimate it by replacing P with P hat. All right, so now the sample proportion for the standard deviation is going to end up being the square root of p hat sample proportion times the complement divided by the sample size and taking that square root. All right, so we're going to define this value now as the sample proportion standard deviation to the standard error. Uh, we're going to use this standard deviation, uh, the sample proportion, um, as our standard deviation in our calculations for our confidence interval. All right, so confidence interval for P, now back to that original slide that I showed to you. It's going to be the sample proportion plus or minus the critical value, which we'll get into in just a moment, uh, times the standard deviation, the sample proportion, or the standard error. All right, so we're going to use and evaluate uh, this formula. All right, so now let's go to that critical value. So that Z score, we're going to determine the critical value Z for an 80% confidence interval. We're going to assume normal conditions. Uh, to find the 80% confidence interval, we need to identify the central. So central, 80% of the standard normal distribution. This means it will leave out 10% in both the right and left tails. Um, and we can use inverse normal uh, calculation on the on our calculator in order to find this Z statistic. Um, so if we use a table, we find that 1.28 is approximately 10% um, uh, of the value that's to the right of that graph. So uh, here is this 10% or point, uh, 0 0.10 is going to be the area in a standard normal curve, where the area under the curve is 1. So this value here is 10%. Um, on this side, so we're going to be plus or minus 10%. And so this uh, center here is going to represent 80% or 0.8 uh, uh, for the area of a curve, standard normal curve with an area of 1. So you can use a table or you can use your inverse normal function on your TI-84. All right, so now we have the statistic, the critical value, standard deviation, 
Uh, we said 1.28 was that z-score. So let's go, let's see if we're going to, oh, no, we're not going to use that 1.28. Uh, all right, so let's take an example. I'm going to go back to Mr. Otten's uh, beads experiment. I have 107 red, 144 white. We want to calculate a 90% confidence interval for P. All right, so we, uh, we're going to take this proportion, uh, 107 over 251, so my uh, sample proportion is 0.426. And then from the Z table, 90% is 1.645 Z plus or minus. Uh, I'm going to uh, multiply using my standard error, 0.426 times the complement of that value over uh, N, which is 251. And I end up with 0.426 plus or minus 0.051 which ends up being uh, 0.375 to 0.477. So we are 90% confident that the interval 0.375 to 0.477 captures the true proportion of red beads, because we calculated red over total, red over total, uh, in the jar. And the second part is to argue for or against the claim that 50% of the beads in the container are red. And since this 50% is not within this interval, 90% uh, confidence interval, then we have reason to doubt that Mr. Otten's claim is true. Okay, because in 90% of the samples of 251 red and white beads, we're going to end up with a range of 0.375 to 0.477 that says that uh, we're going to get the true mean in this interval. Uh, 90% of the time. All right, so <clears throat> in this case, uh, we have reason to doubt that 0.50 is going to be in uh, this particular interval. All right, uh, that'll only occur 10% um, of the time. Okay, so moving on to your homework, 8.2.1. So we're going to talk about pennies, back to Mr. Otten's pennies. Um, I claim that 60% are greater than or equal to 10 years old. An SRS of 102 pennies was collected from his stash. It found that 57 were greater than or equal to 10 years and 45 less than 10. So I want you to calculate a 99% confidence interval for the true proportion and then argue for or against the claim that 60% of all pennies of the collection are greater than um, or equal to 10 years old. So I'm going to leave this up here for a moment. And then I'm going to move on. OK, uh, so the third thing we want to do is we want to put it all together using a four-step process. So we're going to straight into an example, example 8.2.3. Uh, so state plan do conclude. Uh, so state, we want to uh, state what parameter we want to estimate. Plan, we want to check for conditions are met. Do, if the conditions are met, we're going to perform the calculations. And then four, we're going to conclude. Um, all right, so university presidents claim that alcohol abuse is the number one problem on college campuses and a major cause of death for young adults. Survey of 10,904 randomly selected U.S. college students collected information on drinking behavior and alcohol-related problems. Binge drinking was classified as having five or more drinks in a row three times in two weeks. Um, and of the survey, 2,486 said they were classified as binge drinkers. So uh, we want to state, plan, do, conclude. And we're going to use a confidence interval. All right, so just need to clarify this. We want to use a 99% confidence interval to estimate the true proportion of college student binge drinkers. All right, so we're going to state, we want to estimate the actual proportion of U.S. college students would be classified as binge drinkers at a 99% confidence level. Uh, we're going to use a one sample Z interval for P if the conditions are met for normal distribution. Uh, then we're going to go ahead and construct the interval. So uh, yes, random as stated. Normal, yes, uh, both um, are going to be uh, P times N and uh, 1 minus p times n, they're both going to be uh, 
greater than 10. Uh, and then <clears throat> the independence uh, condition is met, 10,904 is less than one-tenth of the entire population of college students. So we're going to move on to the due part. Conditions are met. 99% confidence interval is given by uh, that uh, population statistic plus or minus, or the sample statistic plus or minus Z times the uh, standard error. And uh, we're going to use inverse normal from technology. I'm also going to show you another way to calculate uh, the confidence interval. So we end up with the calculations uh, being at 0.218 to 0.238. Uh, and I believe these uh, this is about 0.22, if I'm not mistaken, roughly. And then 1 minus, that would be 0.78 over n, which is uh, 1,904, I believe. So if we use that uh, calculation, we can conclude we're 99% confident that the interval from 21.8% to 23.8% captures the proportion of U.S. college students who would be classified as binge drinkers. All right, so I'm going to move on and I'm going to talk very quickly about using uh, your TI calculator. Uh, and this is just a summary, by the way. You can pause this and review. Uh, in order to calculate the interval. So the things that we need in order to do that, of course, a TI calculator. And then secondly, we need uh, the sample size, the number of successes, so to speak, and then the confidence level. When I believe that we said this is going to be 0.99. So I'm going to change this to 0.99. Oops. Uh, all right. So uh, I'm going to go into the calculator. And I'm going to press the stat button, and then I'm going to scroll over to tests here, and then I'm going to scroll down to 1 minus prop Z int. Uh, so proportion, one uh, proportion, one sample proportion, uh, Z proportion with a Z interval. And I have 2486 successes. 10,904 is my size of the sample. My confidence level is 0.99, and I press calculate, and I end up with uh, 0.21764, which is 0 0.218, uh, to 0 0.238, um, and 22.8 was the uh, actual sample proportion. All right, so we go back to take a look at this 0 0.218 to 0.238. This corresponds to these values that we get using the calculator. Okay, we're going to pause here, uh, come back, and join us for the next part of estimating population proportions.